uh, along uh, the presentation to type in your questions in the chat. Uh, and at the end, we'll be hopefully able to answer most of them. Who are we? Uh, my name is Odulena. I am originally from Bulgaria, but I have been living in London and I'm joining from London today. Uh, I've been here for the last 10 years. And the last two years, uh, I've been at Google. I'm an account manager. I work with small businesses uh, like you and also like with partners like one.com. Uh, so my job involves helping partners like one.com help small businesses like yours with Google Ads. Uh, I am an account specialist, so really specializing in how Google Ads work and how to get the best performance out of them. And today I have also my colleague Ankit with me. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ankit and uh, like Otolena, uh, I'm a Googler. I have, again, like Otolena, I have been in London for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, and uh, yeah, or originally I'm from India and uh, while growing up, you know, a uh, lot of my relatives uh, opened their own small businesses. So small businesses uh, are something which are uh, close to my heart. Uh, I have uh, I have been at Google for seven years in various sales and marketing roles. And uh, currently I lead uh, Google's partnership with one.com and uh, help a lot of small businesses on, you know, how we can help them to grow more with the help of Google Ads. In addition to my profession, uh, professional work, I also do some volunteering activities uh, where I advise various startups and small businesses on uh, their go-to-market strategy, et cetera. So, you know, after the conversation, I'm happy to connect uh, over LinkedIn with you as well. Amazing. So before we start, um, I would like you to quickly type into the chat. This will be inter interactive webinar. So I would like you to quickly type into the chat one thing that you would like to get out of this session today, one thing that you really want to learn about and we can, of course, maybe we won't be able to cover everything, but it will be good to understand and maybe adjust uh, what we what we present to uh, to what you expect. So please go ahead, type in the chat. The chat is on the right hand side. How to get the most out of advertising on Google Ads. Great. Yes, we will talk about that. I'm okay. I am the startup of the webinar. Would like to get the most out of driving attention to my website. Definitely. It'll be more okay. Tips on how to be more visual with my website in the big online world. Interesting. Yes, we'll talk about how you can capture traffic on your website, uh, improve my visibility. Yes, so reach more customers, definitely. How we'll make a website ready for new customers. Yes, absolutely spot on. I'm concerned that Google Ads is expensive. If you do it correctly, is there a safety net? That's a good question. And we'll show you, actually, we have done a partnership with one.com and there is a very simple way on how to run Google Ads in, let's say, kind of the most um, efficient way for small businesses. So we'll cover this. Uh, advanced features of one.com, web builder related to marketing. We will not focus specifically on one.com. Maybe this is something that you can take also with, um, uh, with uh, one.com directly. Uh, but we'll talk in general for websites and kind of how to how to make sure that your website works. I would like to know how a virtual company can advertise in local areas. Interesting. We'll talk about local marketing, how to use Google Ads, looking for a solution, how to get more visitors to the right group, best practices, keyword analysis, reaching out more customers on my website, getting more customers to visit my website, how to cons... Um, Consider geo, different countries, markets, SEO, and Google Ads wise. So we'll not talk about SEO, uh, but we'll definitely talk about how to make sure that uh, you appear in the right location. And I'll share with you that this is something very uh, feasible with Google Ads. Uh, and we'll also cover, this is actually our agenda. So we'll start with 
why you should go use Google Ads to grow your business uh, in terms of understanding really uh, where uh, Google Ads can help businesses like yours. Uh, then we'll talk, Ankit will lead you through how Google Ads actually work. So help you to understand uh, where your ads can appear and the basics of bidding. Uh, so this uh, area on how to be effective with your bidding and uh, when actually you pay with Google Ads, how to make it less expensive. And also, uh, I will cover a session and especially what you wanted to understand more uh, is how to get your websites uh, ready for new visitors. So once people click on your ad and come to your website, how to turn these newcomers into loving buying customers. And finally, we'll share with you uh, where in uh, the one.com control panel you can find Google Ads, how to start your campaign. And also there is a special offer specifically for one.com customers from Google. So stick to the end of the webinar to find out about the offer. So uh, we'll talk about uh, growing your online presence today. And uh, I wanted to open up here with a small uh, poll. I will just uh, launch the poll now. What businesses do you think uh, can benefit from Google Ads? Uh, big brands, small businesses, or any business which is not restricted from advertising? You can start voting now. Oh, wow. Nobody's voting for big brands yet. Uh, the voting is on the right hand side. It should pop up. There is um, there is a poll which I launched. Well, everybody seems to believe that that's the right answer. I was expecting something else, but you seem to be very, very well informed audience. There is only one vote who, because this used to be an assumption that um, Google Ads is great for big brands, but small businesses uh, cannot benefit. It's not true. Both big and small businesses um, can equally benefit from Google Ads. And today we're going to focus specifically on how small businesses can do this. Cool. I will end the poll now. Let's meet our character of the day. This is Julie. Uh, which it's just an example. Julie recently opened a small flower shop in Lund, Sweden. Uh, she's been working really hard to spread the word around the uh, about the shop in her local area. Um, Julie recently created a website with one.com, hoping to get more phone calls and orders from a radius neighborhood around her shop. So, of course, Julie can be any business. Um, in this regard, we've chosen a flower shop, but this could be an insurance, a uh, small insurance company, a travel agency or real estate, a doctor, a dentist, uh, you name it. But uh, this is, let's say, a small business owner, and uh, she's trying to, to get new visitors, specifically with online. Online is something new for her. Uh, and today, uh, Julie will be in conversation with, um, with this uh, cute guy, the Android. Um, we'll talk specifically about how Google can help um, you show your new website to more people in the area uh, who are searching for flowers right now. Many of you might be thinking, well, I just created a website. Why should I now start paying for ads? I've paid already for my website. I've invested some time making my website. Um, well, ads can help you reach people exactly in the moment when they are searching for services or products like yours on Google. What we find out is that Google is uh, the place where people discover. About 50% of shoppers surveyed said that they use Google to discover and to find new item or a product. In 2020, we saw a lot of changes and probably you have felt these as well. Everybody did. Um, we saw how shoppers specifically changed the way they buy. Almost all, 91% of shoppers changed the way they buy. Uh, we see that people about 30% of people uh, went online to purchase something they would normally buy in store. 
here in the UK in the summer, we had people purchasing grass and turf and garden materials that would normally they would go to a to a store and, and uh, get them. But because regulations were changing, people were looking for options to do a lot of the things they would use to do in person to do it online. Same with garages, car shoppers. Uh, what, another trend that we see is that um, more and more people search locally, which is great news for small local businesses, as 42% um, of surveyed shoppers said that they would look for um, whether a shop is closed or open, even if it's near them for the first time. As regulations were changing and uh, countries were going in and out of lockdowns and different rules were coming in, uh, people were looking to understand even if, if it's a small trip in their local area where this business is open or closed. So uh, using uh, features like, for example, Google My Business can help you uh, make sure that people are aware of your changing opening hours or specific times when the shop is open or different new services that are available. And finally, we saw that more than half of uh, the shoppers that we surveyed were open to try new services. Um, so they tried new service for a first time uh, some, and people we see are generally more open to try a brand that they have never tried before, which is also great news for small businesses and not uh, famous brands. Well, Julie is thinking that the holiday season is coming up and probably I can get some more customers for my flower shop. That's right. As more people are searching locally and open to new services, there is an opportunity coming ahead. But the customer journey is quite confusing. Uh, we can see that this is just a simple example of a user um, who is trying to fix a broken fridge. Uh, it involves a lot of searches, a lot of watches, a video, and using different features of Google, not only the search part. Uh, so having content and having uh, opportunity to appear on different, um, on different uh, surfaces is also important. Uh, for example, you start with a simple search on how tutorials on how to fix the fridge, then you read an article and you visit um, a, a local store or a web an, an e-commerce store to try to find um, uh, sockets and ratchets and wire cutters. And you watch a DAI YouTube video um, to fix a cloaked coil, whatever this is. And finally, uh, you uh, do a search for a local handy person because you realize that you are not a handy person yourself. And finally, you end up booking the service, which we call in the marketing world, we call this a conversion. But the idea is that a conversion sometimes doesn't happen straight away. And um, people might need to interact with you many times online or offline before making a decision. And as uh, Ankit will show you, Google Ads works with pay-per-click. So sometimes when people click on your ad and come on your website, they might not commit uh, immediately book a service or convert, but this doesn't mean that they don't find uh, the information useful and it doesn't mean that this is not helping your business. So I will let actually Ankit explain more uh, on how Google Ads work now. Yeah, th thank you very much, Adelina. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, sending across uh, your questions. Uh, we will we'll try to cover most of them uh, in this section. And uh, if not, if we do not go into enough details, then Odolina and I will cover them in more details in the Q&A uh, part of our uh, webinar. Yeah, so uh, let's go to the next slide. So before I talk about how Google Ads work, you know, I just wanted to uh, give you this vis visualization of you know how Google Ads can help. So when you think from Google Ads perspective, many times people think that you know Google Ads are something which drive the visits to the websites. Uh, but the impact of Google Ads is not just limited to driving the website visits. Google Ads can help you to get more phone calls depending on you know whether you have put an action on your website about contact us. And if you have a, a store or if you are operating some services uh, in your little shop, then Google Ads also influence to increase the, the physical visits to your stores or your shop. Uh, and more importantly, these days you can 
You can track all of this information uh, from Google Ads. Uh, soon with one.com, we will be coming up with a feature where you will be able to track all of this information that how many people actually visited my website, how many phone calls did I actually receive, and how many store visits did I actually get. So, so moving on, uh, I just wanted to give you a very simple representation of a four steps process of how all the intelligence and the machine learning works in the background to make sure you know uh, how we represent the best uh, Google Ads to the information which the users are looking for. So let's let's start with a very simple example. Let's say if if I am a user and if I'm looking for some Christmas flowers, so then what do I do is type a search query on Google.com that called Christmas flowers. Then what what happens is our machine runs two things. One is it it uh, scrolls all the websites in the world and tries to find out information which is most relevant to the user. For example, okay, where the user is based what they are looking for. Let's say if I am based in London and I'm looking for some Christmas flowers, then I would uh, you know, Google will try to find that accurate information. And at the same time, uh, the advertising engine of Google runs a real-time auction where all the uh, shops who are stocking flowers or Christmas flowers are bidding for the search query. And then we determine based on uh, some factors we call as uh, ad ranking. We will be talking about ad ranking in the coming slides on what are the most appropriate and suitable ads to be shown to that particular user. Then what happens is we have, we have the most relevant ads shown at the top. And then following that, we have some of our own organic search results. And then at the bottom, we again have same, same ads. So in the background, what happens is all the advertisers uh, are bidding for keywords, uh, you know, as one of the questions said, like let's say the keywords could be flowers or Christmas flowers. And then we will determine, okay, what was the bid like? What is most relevant? Whether the user is looking for on desktop or mobile, where the user is based. And according to that, we will show the ads where the probability to click the ads is the highest so that, you know, we drive more calls for you, more website traffic, more conversions for you. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, this is just a physical representation of, let's say, all the machine learning has uh, has run. We have gone through all the websites. We have found out what the ads. Then let's say the two most appropriate ads on the desktop are shown to the user here. And then let's say the another example is if I'm looking for uh, a, a pizza delivery. Uh, yesterday, I was looking for pizza delivery uh, in my house. My son wanted to have pizza as he loves it. So I was looking for, OK, local pizza delivery on my mobile. And again, you know, if you see that, it's not just the results uh, from the large brands like Domino's, which show up. You know, it, uh, Local pizza delivery does show up. And uh, you know, I was able to order pizza uh, locally. So, so that's uh, the representation of you know, the ad which is most relevant to the user is something which is shown from Google's perspective. Yeah, before we talk, we talk about uh, you know, how ads work in some more detail, I just wanted to cover some of the very basic things. Uh, OK, there is, there's a question. We will be covering the questions just after my, my section. So some of the very basic things which I wanted to cover are you know, we keep hearing about these terms a lot, like OK, impressions, clicks, conversions. And it all looks to be a bit confusing and complicated. So I just wanted to tell you that, OK, impressions is something which is you know when when let's say in the previous slide we saw that you know the ad has been shown let's say tony's pizzeria ad has been shown so the number of people who are actually seeing the ad is called as impressions but the important thing to note here is that google does google search ads do not charge you for impressions so uh, you know it is like if your ad is shown to the users a lot of users will see it, but that is not going to be cost for you. That is going to be free for you. After impressions, there is actually clicks, which is when people are actually clicking on the ad of Tony's Pizzeria with an, with an uh, aim to either call Tony's Pizzeria or place an order online if there is an order online capability. And that is the moment when the click actually happens, that people are engaging with the ad. And this is where we charge you for the ad. 
And after the clicks, there is something which is known as conversions. So, so let's say uh, after user has clicked, they have, uh, they have either called you or placed the pizza online. This is what is counted as conversions. And uh, uh, you know, we have various features within, within Google Ads that you, know, you can optimize your ads to drive more conversions or more clicks, whatever is the goal uh, from your business point of view. Okay, so 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 just a reminder, you know, compared to a lot of other advertisements, uh, uh, you might you might hear Google search ads is something where you play only when the user is clicking on your ad, right? Which is when they are uh, actually interacting with the ad. So what happens? Let's say you subscribe uh, for uh, 150 euros package on one.com for a month. That does not mean that. You know the money, which is 150 euros, is lost. What what happens is, we uh, the we take the money only for the ads which are clicked, and rest of the money stays in the system. So your campaigns keep on running till the time you know you get the full value of your investment with one.com, right? So it, so let's say in the first month, uh, you you uh, you saw that a little less number of ads were clicked then we will not be using those whole 150 euros. We'll be using the lesser amount and we will continue to optimize the ads in such a way that you know, we, we make your ads better in terms of look and feel so that you get more clicks next month. And in next month, whatever is the remaining amount of that 150 euros, we will, we will use that and the new amount you pour in. So it's not like you know, uh, the amount uh, which you have uh, placed is lost. We, we only take the amount where people click on your ads. Okay, and, and something which is again very important to know is, uh, is many times there's a myth like, let's say I'm bidding for something for $3 and somebody else, it's a big brand who is bid bidding for $5 and, uh, or, or in order to beat a big brand, I, have, I will have to bid $5 if, uh, you know, if people are bidding at $3. Uh, but uh, you know, back in the day when Google started search ads, they came up uh, in in the late '90s, like '99 or something. They came up with a new philosophy that we want the system to be the fairest of all. So what happens is this is a second price auction. So the winner, let's say the uh, Julie who is from the flower shop, is actually going to pay in this case just one cent more than the second highest bidder. So even though she bid for something like $5, but if the second highest bidder was $3, Julie will actually be paying just $3 and one cent. So, so that is an important thing to note that you, you just pay on the amount which is just one cent more than the next highest bidder. So even if you bid high, we, we will not be taking a high value. We will just make sure that you know you have you participate in a fair auction and the system is fair for you. Yeah, so, so something which I wanted to, to talk about is uh, what is important from Google Ads perspective is, uh, is the user experience. We always want to make sure that people find the most important and relevant information. And this is, this is how our ad system is also designed. So when you think from uh, a user perspective, you, if you are participating in ads, you will be reaching the people with specific interests. For example, if I'm looking for uh, pizza, and uh, if you are a pizzeria or, or you're bidding for pizza, then your ad will be shown. But let's say if you, if you are a, a burger joint and if you do not serve pizza and you do not bid for pizza, then your ad will not be shown. So, so what is important here is that you know we understand that what the user is looking for, let's say they are looking for pizza, we understand that what location the user is in. So let's say I'm in London and I might be looking for a pizza delivery, maybe five miles from where I live. So that is how we will, we will show the ads. So your money will not be shown, uh, your, your money will not be wasted in showing ads to the users who are not relevant for you. So our system uh, optimizes things in such a manner that you know we will show your ads to people who are actually looking for something at that point of time. They are interested in that so that the chances of clicking on the ad and then converting for you are higher. 
You can also target your audience. For example, if you are an exporter uh, based in Sweden, and if you are exporting something to UK, then you will have the option to select the specific geographies where you can target the ads. And this is something which you can again do uh, in the tool which Pun.com provides. And finally, uh, in, in the dashboard, which, which is there, uh, you, you can measure the success. You, you can actually go and see every month that how many clicks you actually received. Uh, um, and, and later on, uh, sometime by middle of next year, we are coming up with more options where you will be able to see that how many people actually call my website and actually, uh, actually convert it as well, like how many actual sales I delivered. So you will be able to track all, all your success with the ads um, in the in the dashboard. Yeah, so so it's it sounds like a bit complicated, right? So I'm talking about you know uh, conversions. I'm talking about keywords. I'm talking about uh, you know making the ads better in terms of look and feel. So so how can we make things simple for you? And th this is where you know Google came up with the model of of partnerships. So we we partner closely with one.com, who who make the ads very simple and easy to use uh, for you. And also, uh, it becomes very easy for you to track the performance You know, just going through uh, one tool uh, at one.com. So where you can access Google Ads in one.com, so if you log in into your control panel, uh, you will see something called as a marketing uh, section. And within that, uh, there is something a, a link called go to Google Ads. So this is where, where you click to find Google Ads. And then it will take you through a tool where you can set up set up the ads. The first time you do, go through the tool, it's going to be like a multi-step process. But after that, what happens is the algorithm, uh, which is there in the tool, that uh, optimizes all your ads by default. And uh, the good thing is that when you, when you go through this tool, it also suggests some keywords in the end. So, so you know you can select your keywords in the beginning, but let's say you're confused what what more keywords should I put in? That will, uh, depending on your website, that the tool will automatically suggest you some keywords to to select or put in. So so that makes the job easier for you. Yeah, and and it also also tells you the geography uh, if you want to select a particular geography for your ads to be shown. So, so the key advantages of choosing one.com is that you can create um, ads very simply and automate the process. Like once you've created uh, the ads, everything else, which I talked about, like you know, uh, from a relevance point of view, whether the ad is relevant or not, and uh, whether it's being shown to the right users or not, and that, that is taken care by the system itself. And you, you can always track and measure your performance uh, through your dashboard, which one.com provides. And uh, you can control the budget. Uh, Edit, pause, or cancel your your campaigns. And as I mentioned, that uh, you know the the money which has gone into the system will will be utilized to the full extent because actually you will the real money you will be paying uh, will be only for the ads which are clicked. So so we will make sure that the full money is utilized and you see the full value uh, from Google Ads. Sounds yeah. great. Uh, thanks a lot, Ankit. And um, let's um, recap. Uh, consumers spend a lot of time online. They uh, come to Google to find things. Uh, Odulina, your uh, slide is unpinned now, so you might want to pin it again. OK. Uh, if you're not able to see the slides, then uh, you can uh, uh, click on the uh, on the tab where it shows the slides, on the screen where it, where it shows the slides, and just use the pin to the screen button there. Yeah. I hope it's visible now. I have pinned mine. Um, so I see nothing. You will have to pin the the slide with, um, with which I'm presenting. When you hover over the slide, there is a there is a pin, and uh, when you pin it, you will you'll be able to see the presentation. I found it. You got it? Yep. yep. So yeah, just hover over the the slide where you see if you see like a, a lot of tiles of uh, of speakers and faces, uh, find the tile with the slides 
And then uh, when you hover over it, you can pin this uh, one. So it will stay as a big screen and you'll be only uh, seeing the slides. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, so let's recap. Uh, consumers spend a lot of time online. Uh, Google Ads can help you find new customers. And one.com can help you set up and manage Google Ads in a very simple way. Let's look at how you can actually get your website ready for these new visitors. Now you set up your uh, campaign with uh, one.com. Some of you mentioned, let's talk about technicalities. But the reason why we have partnered up with one.com is because the campaign you set up there uh, does not require you to go into technicalities. It's really a few clicks and you get your campaign running. But what's more important is on how, let's say, to turn uh, these new visitors that are coming for the first time to your website into buying customers. The journey and what the actions what people can take on a website is, uh, again, it could be a lot of things. Uh, they can visit some pages, uh, sign up for newsletter, download brochure. Maybe some of them who are more interested would like to give you a call, uh, submit a form and request uh, some information from you. Then typically you might meet them for a demo, uh, for a meeting, conversation. Maybe they can come to your store. And finally, after some consideration, the customer buys. Uh, there are a lot of different actions and I would like to understand a little bit more about your businesses. So I have another poll here, which I'm going to launch now. So you should be able to see the poll on the right hand side. Uh, and the question is, what actions your, uh, you expect from your customers when, uh, when they're on your website? Do you want them to buy a product directly, uh, fill out the form, give a phone call? Maybe they want to subscribe to a newsletter, uh, come to your home or store, uh, or maybe there is more, more than one of the above or something else. It will be interesting to understand what kind of actions you are take, uh, customers can take on your website and what you ideally want them to do. So we see a lot of people have actually e-commerce uh, product they can buy online, filling out a form. So it could be more than one. The poll should be on the right-hand side of your screen. Okay. So it seems that it's, uh, yeah, it should pop up actually. Yeah. Correct, thank you. So there is a triangular shape on the on the right hand side, and there you see polls. So the poll should be on now. We have about forty votes, and we seem that half of the uh, of the audience uh, would actually have a product that they would expect the customer to buy online on their website. Um, we have some people uh, who have a form, uh, also. Uh, a lot of people expecting a phone call as well. Um, newsletter not so popular. Coming to the office or the store, uh, or many of these, or maybe something different. There are a few two other questions that they, two other users that um, have something different as an action. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now. Thank you so much for voting, and I apologize for those of you who find uh, the Google Hangouts confusing. Uh, it's the first time probably you're using it. Uh, what I was uh, trying to uh, explain here is that there could be a lot of different actions that you could be taking. And sometimes users might be taking different uh, many of these before you remember the journey with the, with the broken fridge. Uh, and all of these could be relevant. But of course, not all of them are equally valuable. So what happens when people come on a new website that they haven't seen before? Uh, well, it looks interesting, but I have never heard of them. How can I trust them? It's interesting, but I need more time to decide. 
for those of you who probably have uh, an office or uh, a store, a physical store, when people walk in, or even when you walk in in a new store that you haven't heard of ever, uh, it's the first time you come in and people are so kind to you and asking, how can I help? How can I help? And uh, you, you just want to look around. You just want to find out, is it expensive? Is it worth the price? Is there someone better? Maybe you want to ask your friends or family whether they have heard of you or know something about you. It's the same dynamic that happens when people come on a new website they have never heard of before. It might be the best website in the universe and have the greatest prices and the greatest products, but most of the time people will take some time before deciding to buy, especially for those of you who uh, want to sell a product online. This is why um, there is uh, the opportunity to establish uh, connection with users when they are not ready to buy yet through lead capturing. What are leads? Leads are uh, prospective customers, let's say the contact details of customers who might be on your website for a first time and they are not ready to buy yet. What happens, they did a search, maybe they clicked on an ad or they clicked on organic uh, result on Google, they come to your website and uh, there is this wonderful product, but there is also a newsletter or there is also 10% offer if you subscribe for the newsletter. Uh, you have seen this on many e-commerce websites. Uh, this is called lead capturing. If you leave your email address, maybe your name, or sometimes some businesses ask for a physical address or a phone number, depending on uh, what they want to send you. Uh, maybe they send you a physical catalog or they uh, would like to give you a call or send you a text message. Uh, then you collect um, these contact details and you use them to establish a relationship with these customers who are not ready to buy yet from you. So Julie is wondering, I'm selling flowers, why should I collect leads? Well, leads are a way of building a relationship with prospective customers who are not ready to buy yet. Uh, this is why it could be relevant even for businesses who sell directly on their website. Capturing leads could be a way of uh, getting a database of prospective customers, uh, introducing your new sales and really uh, doing online marketing. So only running ads is not fully online marketing. It has a lot of different aspects because there is a lot of different actions that people can take online. Here is an example of a journey. Um, so here our prospective customer comes to the website, downloads a brochure, ends up in the database of this uh, seller. Then what happens is they receive offers, um, maybe invitations for a special event, uh, information, freebies, discounts, uh, maybe a new product launch. What happens is over time they understand who, uh, and this can happen with, through different sources, not only through email, can be mail, can be SMS, it can be uh, different uh, physical events in um, outside of the Corona uh, environment. We used to have physical events where you would invite some customers for a private view, for example. Then what happens is once they've generated trust in you, uh, they end up uh, buying the product. What, user, what marketers actually use is called lead hooks, uh, which might sound complicated, but it's literally, uh, you have seen many of these and probably downloaded some of these and uh, being um, uh, taken a, a lead hook from, from other sellers yourself. Uh, so this is a free report, a free guide, a sample, maybe 10% discount when you subscribe, uh, iconographic, newsletter, or more offers that are available only online uh, for certain customers who sign up. Um, well, this sounds awesome and I would like to learn more. Maybe I'm not ready to buy it, but this information is valuable to me. They are giving it for free. I just need to leave my contact details. One important note here is uh, to make sure that you always include your privacy policy and make sure that uh, the, advertise, the user agrees to receive communication from you. You have to clarify what kind of uh, marketing uh, purposes uh, you're collecting this information uh, for, uh, that you will only use it in order to contact them for uh, specific uh, purposes and deals. Uh, so as long as the user agrees and expects this communication, it's all good. There are three pillars on communication with your uh, prospective customers. First, educating your customer. 
for example, in uh, the Julie's example with the flower shop, um, let's say you have never, uh, I never knew that orchids are so easy to look after. Let's say uh, she is creating a lot of content around how to look after orchids, um, blog articles, video tutorials. Uh, then comes uh, the building trust and credibility pillar of communication. Um, there, let's say Julie happens to be a three times winner of the local town hall orchid uh, competition. Uh, so she shares this in her newsletter via email. She creates a social media post. Um, maybe she received a recent review from a big um, uh, local uh, customer who thanks for her amazing work she did on, a, on an event. Uh, so all this information builds, helps you build trust and credibility. So this can happen on your website, with your social media, with your blogs, video content, all kind of uh, activities you can, you can do online in order to, uh, to drive these pillars. And finally, uh, which is I see a lot of businesses uh, when they first start with online marketing, they really focus a lot on driving action, whereas users are not ready to take this action yet. So Julie is running a sale for pink orchids and she sends an email to her VIP list of uh, leads. And this is when, uh, let's say, uh, the customer is ready to take action. Uh, this is when you send your offers, maybe a sale event, free delivery weekend. It could be any kind of more uh, action-oriented type of communication. But before uh, educating and building trust, this type of action-oriented marketing does not always work very well. So what else can I do with my website? Well, your website can be a great tool to increasing incoming phone calls, store visits, and showcasing your offers. Actually, when it comes to phone calls, when you create your campaign with uh, one.com, there is a place where you can uh, enter your phone call, uh, your business phone number. Uh, what, it's very important that you include this one because this will be part of the ad. So once people search for, uh, let's say, your product uh, and they see your ad on a mobile device and you have your phone number, uh, this will appear under the ad uh, itself and users will be able to call directly from the ad and uh, request uh, to, let's say, book an, a meeting or uh, let's say in this example uh, with a hair dresser can book uh, a slot for a hairstyle. Also, What's great is for those of you who are interested in local marketing is to create a Google My Business account. It's free. It's basically claiming your place on uh, Google Maps. And uh, you can connect this account with also with your ad campaign uh, with uh, uh, Google Ads. What happens then is that the, the line of your address will also appear under the ad and people can click on it, which will take them to Google Maps. They can walk to your store uh, they can see whether it's open or not because you can enter also your uh, closing and opening hours uh, in uh, Google My Business and they can just pop uh, into the store. So it's uh, also driving store visits. So let's recap. It's been a lot of information. Uh, when you advertise uh, on Google, new people will see your business. It is important to build a relationship with them because many of them would not be ready to buy yet. And collecting leads is a great way to do this. Google Ads can also help you get phone calls and also uh, drive more people to visit your store or website. The next step for you, and this is where the special offer comes in, is going to your control panel, uh, to the marketing section, select uh, go to Google Ads and start uh, the campaign. Um, it will take you maybe less than 10 minutes to create a campaign. You literally have to choose your uh, location, where, uh, where you are based, what type of business you have, some features of the business. And as Ankit said, uh, the tool will help you to select keywords, uh, create your ad copy, enter your business phone number as well, so you can receive calls from your ads and your setup. At checkout, select the starter pack. Uh, so the starter pack is, uh, contains a special offer from Google which means that we will match uh, only for specifically for customers of one.com, we will match the uh, spend, uh, your advertising spend for the first 30 days. You will receive this amount in ad credit. 
um, up to uh, $150. It depends on the country where you're based. You have to check, I don't know how much this is in Krona or uh, in different currencies, because I know we have people from different countries on the call. Uh, but once you select the starter package, let's say if you spend up to $150 um, uh, of uh, any, anything that you spend uh, up to $150, during your first 30 days of the campaign, Google will give you this amount in ad credit. So if you spend $150, you will get another $150 for free uh, to continue advertising over the next month, or you can top up with some uh, more investment from your side and you will have basically double uh, amount in uh, credit plus, uh, plus your own investment. And this is available specifically for uh, one.com customers because of the partnership with Google. And this is all from us for now. Thank you so much uh, for sticking up. Uh, now we can uh, hopefully take a few questions. Yes, uh, so we, we do have some questions on chat. And in addition, if you would like to uh, ask some more questions, you can either use the raise a hand button or uh, you know you can just unmute and ask the question. So so Odulina, we we do have uh, some questions around uh, how we can do local ads. We can help with local ads, and also some questions around you know how how to select keywords, how to select the right geography and the right target group. So so let's start with uh, those uh, questions. Maybe Odulina, if you would like to talk in slightly more details on how we can uh, help. Uh, through one.com to either select uh, the geographies or uh, through keywords, etc. Great. Yeah, these are great questions. And uh, what's uh, awesome about the tool with uh, one.com is that you have the capabilities of selecting a geography. So close, you can select a country, a city, or you can go with radius marketing. So you can select the postcode where your uh, business is located and uh, you will be able to, uh, let's say, run an ad only for uh, people who are within a radius around you, and you determine how big the radius is. It can be from two miles to 20 miles. Uh, you can decide what radius uh, you select. Uh, and this means that uh, your ads will only appear uh, to people who are searching for keywords that you have selected, uh, searches related to your keywords. Uh, and they are also in this physical location. So this is great if you are, let's say, delivering only in a specific country or you want to have people to come to your physical location or uh, in a way you, you operate only locally. So that's on the uh, specifically on local campaigns. Then uh, there was a question around keywords, right? How to select the right keywords? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is also uh, quite automated when you use one.com. Uh, it's quite simplified. Uh, so you will already have uh, entering, let's say, the type of your business. Uh, you will be able to see uh, a pre-selected group of keywords, you which you may approve, they may be exactly the keywords that describe your business, uh, but also you will be able to generate some more and to enter some more yourself. Uh, when it comes to keywords, uh, I would say always try to think about how you would find the business. So sometimes when I see small businesses starting with keyword research, they would put a very complicated uh, search query kind of which describes uh, the, uh, their business, but try to, to think about uh, someone who doesn't know that much on how they find your service. Uh, we will have some tools within, within one.com which allow you to come up with a selection of keywords, uh, but also uh, feel free to also uh, ask for friends or maybe test it with uh, friends and family and ask them, what would you type to find the business? Like, uh, someone who is not directly involved with the business. And you can find out a lot of ideas from that as well. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Adolina. There, there is one, one more question. I think there are um, a broader question about uh, uh, Google Ads versus Facebook Ads uh, pros and cons. Uh, so maybe I can start at a very high level. So 
So the key difference between Google Ads and Facebook Ads is that Google Ads uh, are, are shown on Google.com and all the other partners uh, who, uh, all the other publishers who type with Google. Uh, and they are shown when a user is specifically typing the search query. So they are in the moment, they are either looking to buy something, looking to read reviews or some of something, or let's say if I'm looking for spa services near me. So they are shown when the user is in the moment to make a decision. Uh, they, uh, secondly, Google Ads, uh, you are not charged by Google search ads when your ad is displayed, right? So when the ad is shown to the user, you are not charged. You're only charged when the user is interacting with the ad. So when the user actually clicks on the on the ad. So, so it is click-based and not impression-based. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, Facebook ads, and we do have similar other offerings from Google, which are known as display ads. Uh, they are more uh, driven by, uh, either an audience type or let's say uh, on, on cookies, let's say if you have visited some websites and you have agreed for remarketing cookies, then you can see uh, Facebook your uh, Facebook ads uh, in your Facebook feed uh, through remarketing cookies. So those are the key differences that Google Ads is more in the moment when the user is looking for something, trying to make a decision uh, or read the reviews, and uh, then you are charged only when the user interacts with the ad. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say also that it's different mindset when people are scrolling and discovering, let's say it's more of a discovery moment, whereas with search, it's a, it's an action-oriented moment. So when they're actively looking um, to solve a problem. Yeah, I think there is also a question around uh, if I do not buy Google Ads, does it mean that I will not be found on general search? So Odulina, do you want to take that? And then I can elaborate a bit more. Sure. Uh, so absolutely, uh, you can be found in, uh, in search without ads. Uh, this is uh, when you do search engine optimization or SEO. You might have heard of this, uh, of this subject. But um, uh, doing SEO, it sometimes it uh, requires some extra skills and uh, knowledge. This means that you have the right uh, content on your website, that you have um, included, um, let's say there's a lot of other websites referring to you. There is a free guide on how to do SEO. Actually, if you look on, uh, on uh, our blog, Think with Google, uh, there you can find the basics on how to optimize your website. However, SEO depends on a lot of factors. It's a very complex uh, and um, it's sometimes a difficult process. It might take also some time, especially if your website is brand new. This is why you can use Google Ads uh, in order to uh, kind of uh, drive uh, traffic uh, to your website uh, immediately. Also, what's good is if you have high, good SEO and you run Google Ads simultaneously, you will be able to show in the result twice. Uh, so you have more opportunities to get a click to your website. Yeah, and, and maybe uh, related to, to websites, I think there was one question around how, uh, how I can improve the visibility of website. And there was also a question around how I can make my website more visual. I believe some of the best practices which Odulina mentioned that you know making the website uh, you know more action oriented uh, that that is uh, going to be useful in that direction. And uh, uh, yeah, in in terms of improving visibility and making it more visual, Odulina, do you want to share a couple of thoughts? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so when it comes to making your, your website more visual, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, making sure that you include high good images, let's say high resolution images, uh, and also make sure that when you are making it visual, you are still uh, keeping an eye on the objectives. Sometimes you might see websites that look, let's say, not so beautiful, 
uh, but they work very well uh, because uh, the the reason of a website, and I see especially with uh, arts uh, and uh, let's say uh, arts and crafts type of businesses, galleries, they often focus a lot on the visual side to make it really, really attractive and appealing, uh, which is great. But when, especially when you're running a business, you have to focus also on the action side. So if you're making the website visual, kind of think with a purpose on what what these visuals are doing. Are they helping the user make a decision? Are they showcasing the best out of your product? Uh, do, uh, does the visual speak actually to, to the user? One example I can give you is uh, a pet uh, insurance company, which was running ads, uh, visual ads, with um, a person signing a paper, uh, signing the, the pet insurance. And they were not working. And then they changed the image with um, a pet, um, let's say a person signing paper and having a few pets behind him, a cat and a dog. And this all started making sense. So when using visuals, think whether they communicate also uh, the business and make it easy to understand from one side. And you can test this as well with friends and family, show them your website and ask them, what do you think this website is for? Uh, if they don't understand it immediately, then maybe you can work a little bit more on the on the communication with visuals. Thank you. And I'll, I'll take up the last question, which was about, uh, you know, would it be possible to find out uh, if the ad, ad someone is about to launch is effective or not? Uh, whether do we give any pre-launch feedback? So I would suggest uh, some some best practices uh, to follow, which is you know try to include uh, as much information as possible uh, about about the about the ad in the ad copy itself. Uh, there are also some extensions which you sh should include. They give more information uh, to the users. If you have some special offer going on, uh, you can include that as well. So so in a nutshell, the the more information you provide to the users when they see the ad, the higher are the chances that they would actually be clicking on the ad. So, so that is a general best practice I would suggest. And uh, uh, in terms of whether the ad is effective or not, uh, you will be able to see uh, the, the metrics after your ad campaign has been launched. And uh, as I mentioned that whenever there isn't a click, uh, your you will not be charged, but uh, bear in mind that you know in the in the back end, what we also do is continuously work on op optimization uh, with with one.com that how we can improve your your ads to make it uh, more appealing uh, to the users you are targeting. Yeah, I saw just one more question from Ross. Uh, it was uh, about whether uh, the Google the 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 pins on the map are the same as ads. Uh, so no, they are two different things. Uh, so the pins on the map is basically a free uh, listing which you can create on Google My Business. Uh, so this is literally claiming your the the physical location of your um, of your business on the on the map. Uh, and uh, also, uh, if you include this, uh, you can add this to your ad. So your existing ad can go without location. But if you have um, a location uh, that you have claimed on Google Business and you link it to your ad, uh, this will also show in your advertisement. But you can just run ads without location or have a location without ads. They are independent. Cool. Uh, yes, so, so with that, it's 11 o'clock. Odolina, any final thoughts from your side? Um, no, thanks a lot for everyone joining today, participating, and um, most of you sticking to the end. It was really great um, meeting you virtually, and I really hope that this uh, has been useful for you. We'll send a recording and uh, some links for you to uh, continue your education, and uh, best of luck with, uh, with your online marketing. Thank you very much. And, uh... Uh, hope you found the information useful. Useful, and uh, yeah, as we mentioned, we will be sending more details over email to you. Thank you very much.